Is it on? Is it? That's over and done with. Come on. Oh, my God. Go on. Uh, now I see the other half of the I'm Cookson now. family. That's how we do it. Huh? That's how we do it. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. And I believe that they're on now. And then the blinking button. Should we hit now? Yep. Here is um, okay. Mr. Dean and Mr. Um, LeBron. It is a little after 7, 7.03 p.m. on June 5th, 2017, and I'm going to call the meeting of the Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee to order, uh, and filling in for our clerk, uh, Alderman LeBron, is Alderman Lopez, and I would ask him to please call the roll. Alderman Tom Lopez is here. Alderman LeBron is not here. Alderman June Karen. Here. Alderman at large, uh, David Dean. He's not here. Correct. <laughs> and oh, myself. I'm sorry, Chair <laughs> Alderman Ben Clements. Uh, here. <clears throat> also with us this evening is Alderman at large, Mark Cookson. Uh, Alderman Dean did uh, get in touch with me to say that he was unable to attend this evening. Um, first on the agenda is public comment. Is there anybody here this evening that would like to speak? Seeing none, uh, we will move straight to interviews. Uh, first, we have the Conservation Commission, Michael Ranke. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, why don't you come in and have a seat <clears throat> anywhere? Yep. And I will have Ms. Kleiner introduce you. Good evening, members of the board. Um, thank you for having us here. Um, the mayor would like to introduce uh, Michael Renke. He's the executive director of the Nashua Soup Kitchen and Shelter. Um, he joined our community um, sometime this past fall, um, although he had spent some time here earlier than that grew up in New England as, as a child. Um, Mr. Renke has been helping uh, the mayor's office in a number of different ways. Um, perhaps you heard of the National Meals for Kids, uh, the program that we're starting at Dr. Crisp. Through those conversations, getting to know him, um, the possibility of him joining the conservation committee came up with his interest in that um, and the mayor would like to thank him very much for his participation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Renke, why don't you introduce yourself to the committee? Okay, so uh, again, it, my name is Michael. It's Reinke. My dad was going to change okay. the spelling of the last E to an A, but he never <coughs> did. But um, uh, So I I was born in Boston. Don't hold that against me. My, my folks were graduate students and I don't know, they had a lot of other al opportunity, uh, alternatives. Um, and they moved us out. Um, as um, Ms. Kleiner mentioned, I, my dad lived in Nashua for a little bit of time. Um, I also lived in Westford, so just down the road. And they eventually moved us out to a little town called Royalston, Massachusetts. It's, um, I think, one of the largest towns geographically, but one of the smallest towns population-wise in the state of Massachusetts about 30 miles south of uh, Keene, and I used to run to New Hampshire and back to get ready for cross-country season. Um, I grew up in New England, went to college in New England. I went to seminary in New York City, so not so far from New England, and um, have been working in um, organizations dedicated to helping communities thrive and grow, and, and I think that's one of the big reasons why I was interested in the Conservation Commission, which is I believe in communities and what can we do to preserve the sense of a community here. Um, I think the Conservation Commission is interested in saying, you know, how do we, what are the natural assets we have in Nashua? How can we not just preserve them, but build on them to have a great future going forwards? Great. Uh, I'm going to open it up to the committee for questions or comments. Alderman Lopez. So I know Michael because uh, as shortly after I left the soup kitchen, uh, he took over um, the position as executive director. And um, I'm very encouraged by his appointment. He's always been interested in um, environmental um, stewardship. He rides his bike everywhere, which is impressive. He's, in fact, tonight. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> in fact, tonight. 
Um, he's a, he's a runner. That's, is it the Cannon? Yeah, right Park? outside. Yes, yes. So he's he's very interested in in not just the the streets and people of Nasha, but the the forests and um, rivers too. Great. Any further questions or comments? Uh, I I myself just want to thank you um, for everything that you do for the city, oh, um, but in particular uh, for donating your time above and beyond what you already do um, for the conservation commission. Uh, it's a certainly a um, it's certainly a good uh, committee, and I think you hit the nail on the head when uh, you said you know that they want to build and expand upon the natural resources that we have. Right. So it's a perfect uh, um, that 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 was perfect to say, and I think you'll be a good addition to the uh, committee. Cool. Alderman Cookson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening, Mr. Ranka. Um, welcome. Yeah, thank you. I am. Uh, Alderman Cookson, and I'm uh, a member of the board, but not a member of this committee. So I wanted to give the, the committee the opportunity to ask you questions prior to anything that I may uh, ask. And I'd just like to follow up in, in by asking if you've had the opportunity to participate in any conservation committee meetings, and if so, what is your perspective of it, and uh, what are some of the main um, concerns that you have with regard to conservation in the city of Nashua? Actually, I, I did have a chance to participate. It was a, a public walkthrough of the um, uh, Brady Sullivan expansion of the parking lot down by the river. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it really, there's there are issues going on. You want to have a vibrant downtown. It's hard to imagine that without having people living downtown, you know, going out to eat, walking downtown, participating in all downtown activities, and yet it's the parking lot is butting up right against where we have the public sculpture there and you want to make sure that there's room there and it's, it's appropriate. Um, you know, I, to me, it seemed like they were striking a good balance in terms of the amount of space that was available there. Um, certainly the Cotton Mill Apartments parking lot comes up fairly close to that um, right of way and, and seems to lend itself to it, doesn't detract from it. And so what they were talking about with um, that seemed to me to be pretty appropriate as well. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it, you want to respect what individual property owners are trying to say, this is what I like to do with my property, um, this is how I can see it lending itself to the city of Nashua, and yet also balancing that with, you know, the general city's population, and we want to make sure that everybody is seeing the river as a as an asset, as a resource, something that we can all go down to and put our kayaks in and, mm -hmm. you know, kayak up to the head of Mine Falls Park. Wonderful. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please Thank continue. You. Um, so you mentioned downtown specifically, I am, <coughs> and I am assuming with your work mm -hmm. off of Quincy Street and mm -hmm. with the soup kitchen, um, do you have a focus on any other areas within um, the city? outside of downtown? I, I happen to be a, a fairly active individual, and so I, I tend to cycle a lot. And so the um, rail trail path going along, um, uh, you know, from Main Street all the way out to the highway is, is a big part of my life, as well as the trail that starts in Nashua and ends up down in air. Um, nice trail. Yes. I, ideally, it'd be great to connect the two and have people be able to start here and go all the way, you know, whatever that would be, something like 37 miles. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alderman Lopez? I just wanted to ask your opinion. Um, have you been monitoring the riverfront development project um, that economic development has been um, collecting ideas for mm -hmm. on the co-urbanized site? Yeah, I, I believe that's uh, Mr. Veo in um, the development office, um, or is he in the city... No, yeah. you're correct. You're okay. Correct. Um, and I happened to, he had a hearing or the the, off, the city hall had a hearing on the riverfront and I attended that and also contributed a um, suggestion to it. My, my suggestion, I don't know if people would be in favor or not, but would be that we have a, a downtown bookstore mm -hmm. um, like uh, along the... Mm -hmm. uh, Long River that also might serve as a wine bar, but I don't know if that would be appropriate or not. <laughs> yes, 
Go ahead. So um, I, I completely agree with the bookstore, and I think a lot of people have asked that we put one back down, even though it's not quite as easy as just snapping your fingers and somebody wants to put a bookstore there. Um, but I was particularly interested in what your thoughts would be um, on the, the proposal to put like a boardwalk um, around um, the Milliard area and um, connecting Mind Falls physically with the, um, with the, the river walk, which is on the other side over by, um, mm -hmm. by the sculptures you were talking about, yeah. um, or some of the suggestions to remove foliage along the library walk for better visibility. Absolutely. So I, I'm, I, among other things, I, I mentioned I went to seminary in New York City, but I also got an MBA at one point. And one of the things that I learned in, in some of those classes is that the greater barriers you set up to people being able to access things prevents people from doing it. You know, if you say, wow, I have to go through 20 different steps in order to go for a run today, you're probably not going to go for a run. So if you can make it easy for people to access the Riverwalk and then from the Riverwalk go to Mines Falls Park, um, that seems to me like a great way to encourage people to go out and do it. It's, and it's going to encourage people to have um, greater ownership and greater sense of participation in their city. Um, that said, the specific details about connecting them I'm not very familiar with, so I wouldn't be able to comment on like, oh, it should be here or there. Hmm. Anything, anything further? Uh, seeing, seeing none, I just, again, thank you very much uh, for uh, your time, and we will take up your appointment in just a little bit. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, we have the Nashua Arts Commission, uh, Michael Joseph, if you'd like to come forward. Thank you. And Ms. Kleiner. So the mayor would uh, like to thank uh, Mr. Joseph for coming forward um, and being interested in the Arts Commission. If you look at Mr. Joseph's resume, it is quite impressive. Um, when he has a Master of Science degree in music education, has been a longtime teacher in the Manchester School District as a, as a music teacher, um, and now serves as the cantor at the Christ the King the Lutheran Church here um, in Nashua. He uh, brings a wealth of um, experience and knowledge in music to the commission, um, and Mayor Don just thanks him for ver very much for wanting to participate. Great. Uh, Mr. Joseph? Yes, sir. Thank you. If you'd like to introduce yourself. Well. Yes. Um, I'm uh, a native of uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, which is a very heavily entrenched arts city um, for a small city. Um, uh, huge, huge reputation in, in uh, music and in fine art. Um, I have been, uh, several twists, twists of fate brought me to Manchester, and I lived there for 32 years. Um, I taught in the Auburn School District, Auburn, New Hampshire School District, followed by uh, 16 years in, in Manchester um, as a music teacher directing uh, choruses for the school and teaching, uh, teaching music um, as well. Um, my other hat is as a musician of the church. I am an organist who has um, composed and published, had published uh, works for the organ solos, um, also directed choirs and offered recitals in various locations in New England. Um, so I'm active as a, as a performer and composer, pretty much. Um, and so those are the, the two hats that I wear, basically, is church music and, and uh, in, in the public sector in, in public education. Um, and so I'm a firm believer in, in the purpose of the arts. The purpose of the arts is to help those who are talented and gifted in those areas to be able to express themselves and express their individual uniqueness. Um, and obviously for those who may not be as talented in those areas, um, opportunities to enjoy the beauty of good music, fine art, um, dance, theater, um, all the things that, that art represents. And Nashua is endowed very well um, in, in all of those areas. Um, and so uh, that's why I'm very interested in, in being on this, this commission, because I believe I have something to add, um, something significant to add to it. Um, and uh, 
I, I have happened to know a few people that are on the commission. I worked with Lindsay Rinaldi when I was uh, adjunct faculty at Riviera before they canceled the music program there. Um, and I, I have come to know Mark Thayer through um, uh, One Greater Nashua because I'm training to be a, a navigator for newcomers and refugees. Um, so basically, that's pretty much my background in a nutshell. As, as Kim mentioned, I, the, the term cantor in the Lutheran tradition is the director of music because the cantor uh, is ultimately responsible for all the singing that goes on, and that was an important element of Luther's reforms in the church back in the um, 16th century. So, um, And I'm uh, enjoying the time. Before that, I was uh, at First Baptist Church, Nashua, for three years. I lived in the city for four. Okay. I will open it up to questions, comments from the committee, Alderman Lopez. Just an observation. I'm really excited to hear um, that we have somebody with the background in church music particularly because it's a pretty vibrant culture here in Nashua. There's got to be at least a dozen churches downtown, each one with their own music programs, each one with their own cultural focus, their own denominations. Um, so I think it's a, it, it, <clears throat> it is a culture that's generally um, overlooked. You might think of, different, of it in different terms, but it will be exciting to see that perspective added to um, the Arts Commission. I, I would enjoy adding that element. Um, my colleagues are, are church musicians here, of course. Um, it goes without saying that um, First Church has an incredible program um, of music um, concerts series through the year. So um, that's just one example. But yes, you're right. All the churches are doing their own cultural thing according to their own denominational beliefs and um, the level of musicianship. And often what you'll find is pretty high, actually. So they can be an asset to enriching the community in, in, in many ways. I mean, St. Louis has some skill. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Anything further? Any other questions or comments? I'm, I'm curious, um, what, uh, what school did you teach at in Manchester? Was your dad Mike Clements? Yes, that's I what I was going to ask you. I, I worked Mike. I, wor I, I was an MEA. I was very active in the Manchester Education Association. So your dad and I worked a lot together over oh, the okay. years. Um, yeah, I res have great respect for your dad. Oh, thank you. Um, I thought there was a connection. I always wanted to know. So now I've solved that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I was at Southside, uh, which is now middle school. Then I was junior high for eight years. And then I um, did some itinerant teaching. And elementary schools, um, and uh, my last four years before I decided to um, leave teaching and, and work for the uh, Roman Catholic Diocese uh, was to um, was at, at Parker Varney on the west side, very nice little elementary school. I had, you know, fond memories of that. So, um, yeah, that was my basic experience. And I know a lot of the people that your dad taught with, so they're, they're my friends. <laughs> it's central. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, well, no, that's that that's great, and uh, you know, it's it, it it's nice to have somebody on, uh, or going to have somebody on that commission where, you know, the fo their focus has been with youth because I think mm -hmm. that, you know, in order for the arts to continue forward you have to have interest at an early age and things mm -hmm. like that. And, and a great way to do that, obviously, is through school. And, and so, um, you know, I'm hoping that uh, you can bring some of that perspective um, to the Arts Commission. Well, well, I just want, I'm glad you brought that up because one of my key, the key focus of my career in education was as a talent scout. I mean, I would find young people who were incredibly talented and I would do everything that I could to encourage them to grow and give them opportunities to grow. So I think that's important. Who knows what talent we've got out there that has been untapped. And I think that's an important part of, of working and in trying to enhance music in the schools um, as best we can and, and in the community in general. So Great. Uh, any, any other questions or comments? I just want to thank you uh, for your for donating your time to the Arts Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you'll be a great uh, addition. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you. OK. <clears throat> um, 
next on the agenda is communications, which we have none. Uh, there are no applications this evening, so we will move straight to appointments by the mayor. Um, do I have a, a motion? <laughs> it's right there. Um, I'd like to make a motion to confirm the mayor's appointments. Um, I did it individually, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Renka? Yeah. Michael Renka to the Con Conservation Committee? No, you can do all all one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I'm That's learning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to recommend the confirmation of the following uh, mayor appointments. Um, Michael Renka for a term to expire December 31st, 2017 through the Conservation Committee. Um, and Michael Joseph for the National Arts Commission for a term to expire April 1st, 2019. Okay. You've heard the motion. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the motion carries. And we also have reappointments as well um, after that. Okay. <clears throat> And I would like to make a motion uh, to make the following um, reappointments. If it's to the there. business, no, I just need to find on the yeah. script. Sorry. Okay. To the <clears throat> Business Industrial uh, Development Authority, David Dennehy, for a term to expire between September uh, 1st, 2019. John Stabile, for a term to expire September 13th, 2019. And Mark Proman, for a term to expire April 30th, 2020 to the Conservation Committee. Um, alternate Michael Reinke for a term to expire December 31st, 2017. To the Downtown Improvement Committee, Ron Lafleur, Sai Mafuz, and Simone Saris um, for a term to expire December 31st, 2019. And to the National Arts Commission, Michael Joseph for a term to expire April 1st, 2019. Okay. So you've heard the motion, uh, any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And those appointments will be forwarded with a positive recommendation to the uh, full Board of Aldermen. Um, under unfinished business, we have none. New business, we have none. And uh, tabled in committee, we have um, 017035, which is adopting the All Veterans Tax Credit. And I would move to take from the table 017035. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And uh, Alderman Cookson, who is the primary sponsor, is here this evening um, for that. And uh, I'm going to give the floor to him. Thank you. Um, uh, may I begin by making a motion for? Uh, Actually, do I want to do that? Um, it's taken from the table, correct? It's taken from the table, so if you would like to make a motion to amend. Well, well, well why don't we just make a motion to recommend final passage, and then we'll okay. talk about it, and then... Motion for uh, f to recommend final passage of 017-035 by myself. Alderman Very Cookson. Good. Thank you. Uh, appreciate your time this evening. Um, we've been waiting for this since... Um, Early this term, um, it was back in March that it w went before the full board of aldermen, and it was referred back to committee. And um, for the last several months, we've been waiting on the state house um, to go through their process through um, through the, the Senate, and then through the House of Representatives, and then um, we just received confirmation from Attorney Clark. Um, this past Friday, I believe, we mm -hmm. received the communication. Uh, to indicate that it made it both through the Senate and the House, and now that it, it, it is sitting on the governor's desk for his signature. Um, I thought it was an appropriate time to, for us to take a look at it um, again, and um, there was not um, significant language change uh, within the bill, and I can speak to what the language change was. Um, but I thought it would be an opportunity for this committee to review it again um, and then hopefully get it back to the full board um, prior to our summer schedule. So um, let me just go through some of the information that I do have to share with you. Alderman Karen? Yep. May I ask a question? If sure. it's on, 
Alderman Cookson. To, to Alderman Cookson. Yes. Are they anticipating that the governor is going to sign this without any issues? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Cookson. Thank you. So Senate Bill, Senate Bill 80 is the piece of legislation that we're um, interested in. Um, and again, it, it indicates that it's been adopted by both bodies. Um, the language that has been added to Senate Bill 80 indicates, quote, a town or city with an existing standard or optional veterans tax credit under RSA 7228 prior to August 18th, 2016, adopting the credit under this section may phase in the amount of all veterans tax credit over a three-year period to match the standard or optional veterans tax credit. That's the language that's been added um, uh, to Senate Bill 80. And our language within Ordinance 1735 takes into account that um, uh, the, the language that's included within 1735 takes into account, and uh, so the additional language doesn't affect Ordinance 1735 in the least. Um, we indicate that uh, the city hereby adopts the provisions as is annotated by 7228B, and, and, and it may be amended from time to time relative to... Um, to an all veterans tax credit effective April 1st, 2017, the veterans tax credit shall be the same amount of the city's optional veterans tax credit. So um, we're saying the same thing, nothing's changed. Um, the only thing that we have to take into account now is the fact that uh, the state is allowing us, the city, to phase it in over a three year period. So it's going to be up to us as a committee um, and the full board to uh, determine what that phasing in looks like and how it's going to be addressed by um, our assessing department. I had a conversation with our chief assessor um, today and received confirmation from him that we could do it any way that he, we wanted to, that it would be, you know, it's, it would be up to him to implement our desires, the language that's within um, the ordinance. Um, but I did ask him what he would suggest. He reached out to Manchester, who is also going through a similar process with their um, mayor and board of aldermen. Um, and the suggestion from our chief assessor was to go in a phased three-year period, 100, 350, 500 after three years. So year one, 100, year two, 350, year three, the 500. So that's the recommendation that was provided to me by our chief assessor. Again, it's up to us to determine or to, you know, to add that language as is appropriate. Um, but um, let me pause there and see if there are any questions that the committee has or that I can answer. Is there, do, does anybody have any questions? Or I, I've been privy to a lot of the conversation that's gone on, so I, I, I'm myself pretty familiar with the situation. But um, Alderman Karen, oh, yes, thank you. I, I think this is a, not, a great idea that we phase this in because, as we talked about in committee before, we don't know the additional veterans that would be affected by this, and we have to look at the total picture of our assessing department as to the cost value. So I think that if this is what his recommendation is, and you're fine with it as, a, you know, as the primary sponsor of the legislation, I think this is a great idea, and I think, ev and it makes everybody happy, and we all feel comfortable moving forward that this is going to start hopefully this year. And within three years, it'll be at the maximum. I think that's, uh, I think that's the, you know, we waited to hear from the, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, the state house to find out what they wanted, what they were going to do. So I think this is, uh, I think this is a great way to do, uh, to do this, and and we've taken care of every, our vets. Yes. I I, I would concur with you, uh, Alderman Karen. Um, you know, I um, have no problem with the recommendation of the uh, <clears throat> of the assessor. Um, I, I'm not I'm not a, a hundred percent sure the 
the um, the thinking behind that, but I'm sure that there's good reason for it. Do you did you get any insight as it, to that? It was just the record. That's what was being um, recommended in the city of Manchester. Uh, again, I you know we could go a third, a third, a third. Um, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, I don't think it matters. And the chief assessor indicated to me that um, it didn't matter how we did it. Um, we just, we could come up with three figures. We could come up with um, uh, fractions. It, they would implement whatever it was decided at this level and ultimately what's decided at the full board. Okay. Uh, Alderman Lopez? So I don't like the idea of having to do split into the thirds just because I think this is it was something that should have been thought of a while ago. I think we owe veterans. I mean, the sign right in front of City Hall says National Supports is Veterans. So ideally, we would just say, here's the full tax credit. I also understand that we have no idea how many people are going to claim that credit. So it might be a little bit foolhardy to just say, all right, let's, let's let everybody in at once and then deal with it. Um, so I would be more in favor of stacking the numbers so that we give the larger refund at the beginning and then add the, the, the next two, just because I think we should support our vets. I think they've already paid their their dues in this particular way, and it's it's something we intend to do, so why delay? Alderman Karen? I understand what, what Alderman Lopez is saying, but I think that if you start at the lower end, you get a better idea of how many vets are going to be out there, the additional numbers that we don't know about. And I'm sure that this can be changed, you know, after the first year, because we could certainly could find out the numbers and see how it works out. And then maybe uh, the second year we give them the full amount because it didn't come out to uh, a large additional numbers of uh, veterans that are who applied for it. Um, but I agree, you know, our vets deserve this. But obviously, we're adding a, a segment of the population that we really don't know is out there. So that was my, you know, that's why I felt that the three years was a good idea. Uh, Alderman Lopez? I don't disagree with the three years at all. I just think, I mean, well, I, I wish in a perfect world we knew we had enough um, resources to just say, all right, let's start this full. My, my um, position is basically we started out by saying we were going to do this, and now we're splitting it into three to make sure that we're being responsible to the veterans. But, I mean, from their perspective, it's still us saying, we recognize your service, but we're not sure we can afford to recognize your service. And we're going to do it spread out over three years, but we're going to start out with the smallest amount we have to first, just in case we still can't afford it. I think, personally, a slightly stronger signal is called for because, I mean, we can go either way with it. If it's really, like, financially draining, someone's going to have to have the courage to say, okay, I guess we couldn't fully implement this. We're going to have to make that decision either way. The question is whether we're starting out by saying, this is important and we'll make sure that it's a priority, or saying, well, it's important, but let's start out by not really, like just dipping our toe in the water. I mean, I understand the practicality of saying, all right, well, maybe we need to make sure we don't do the full amount in year one. I just personally would prefer that we start with the stronger hand and, and add the smaller amounts, be conservative with the last half of it or so. The last two thirds. Alderman Cookson. So, um, just to address uh, Alderman Lopez's uh, concern, uh, we have three years to implement. Uh, we we could implement it in three years, and at that point in time, um, at the end of whatever time period it is, if it's a three-year time period that we're phasing it in, at the end of that three-year time period, we would have to. Um, put it at the maximum of the value of the tax credit. So the maximum that we could offer um, a veteran who fits the criteria as established in Ordinance 1735 would be $500. So I, I don't believe that the reverse stacking works in this particular instance because we can't start off with the 500 um, we could start off with another number. If you don't want to start off with 100, you could start off with 253. Wh whatever that number is, you're able to start off with that. The other thing, to Alderman Karen's point, is is that we can absolutely do this. We don't have. We don't. We can always come back and change it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a motion um, with Alderman Clemens' support, um, so that the tax credit is phased in over a three-year period, and and. 
We can do it over a three-year period. We can do it over a two-year period. The state is giving us a three-year period to do it in. If for whatever reason we come back and we evaluate this after the first year of its implementation and say, you know what, we've got enough resources that we, we should be able to do this, we should be able to phase it in over a two-year period, there's nothing preventing us from going back and um, further amending this particular piece of legislation to address it in that, in that way. So. Um, I commend you for your thoughts. Um, I don't think $500 is probably the right way. I don't, I don't think we ultimately know how many um, individuals are going to come and take this tax credit. Now, with that being said, I, I, I believe that it was during a previous personnel meeting that um, the, the number $670,000 was floated around as, as a number. And Again, I don't know if we know that is, is accurate, if that's what it's going to be or not. Um, we don't know how many people are going to take advantage of this, so let's, let's figure out how many people are and let's, you know, let's do it responsibly and you know, figure out um, what we can do in year two or, or year three as appropriate. I, uh, I, I would like to see this. I, I kind of agree with uh, Alderman Lopez. Um, in a, in a sense, um, but I also understand the need for balance. I think the best way to do this is to just implement it into thirds, um, as the state intended. That's the what the legislation intended up at the state house. Um, it, it it sort of um, you know it sort it sort of balances the concerns of. Certainly the mayor had a concern about it, wanted to see this legislation go through. Uh, I think there were some other aldermen who also uh, had the same concerns. Um, you know, so I think um, by doing it in thirds, I think we're, we're following the spirit of the, uh, the legislation at the State House, and I, I think that might be a good compromise as opposed to only, maybe only doing 100 at first. That'll um, Alderman Karen. Yeah, I think that's like $175 yeah. per, which, which I don't have a, a problem is, you know, and, and as Alderman Crookson um, said, you know, year two, if we find that it's not a $600,000 bill that we were looking at, then we could just add the second mm -hmm. year, just make it the, the balance, right. you know, mm -hmm. so. So if, if my math is correct, year one, a third would be $165, year two would be $330, mm -hmm. and year three would be the complete $500. So yes. 165, 330, yep. 500. Right. Mm -hmm. Alderman Lopez? I don't disagree with that plan. I just wanna make sure that we are, we're budgeting for our expenses and we're aware of the need around this rather than trying to balance what we're gonna do with this. You know, I, I think we should make this a priority. I mean, oh, absolutely. If we're, we're going to start configuring, yeah, like, maintaining a performing arts center in there or something, maybe we should make sure the veterans get their part first. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yeah. So is there a motion? Uh, I'm going to defer to Alderman Cookson. Okay. Uh, I, I would move to amend Ordinance 1735 so that the tax credit um, is phased in over a three-year period. That is the motion. Do you want to further amend that to, to say uh, we'll implement it into thirds? Uh, with So I will further amend um, so that year one will be $165. Okay. Year two will be $330. And year three will be $500. Can you repeat those numbers again? $165, mm -hmm. 330 and 500. 500. So the motion to amend by Alderman Cookson is to amend 017035 so that the tax credit is phased in over a three year period with year one starting at $165, year three, I mean year two at $330 and year uh, three at $500. Alderman Lopez. Just a question about process, just because I don't know. Um, do you have to be a member of the committee to amend? Uh, no. If you are the main sponsor of the legislation, then you can amend. 
Okay, so just to clarify it, Alderman Cookson, I wasn't trying to steal your motion. No. I just thought you weren't yeah. able to make the motion. Okay. Uh, this is the only instance um, which a member of, not of the committee, can make a motion, and that is if they're the primary sponsor. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, so we all uh, heard the motion to amend. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and the motion carries. Um, and I will make a motion to recommend final passage of 017-035. Uh, contingent upon final approval by the state of New Hampshire of Senate Bill 80. Uh, so we would be moving this forward as amended, pending basically the governor's signature or non-signature on the legislation. Um, any questions on that? Uh, Alderman Cookson? Just a further comment, um, Mr. Chair, um, and that is I believe that um, Attorney Clark had indicated that we might have an answer prior to um, our next full board meeting when this is taken up if it leaves this committee this evening, that we should have an answer and we'll know exactly where it stands prior to our next full board. Okay, great. Um, any question on the motion for uh, to recommend final passage? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the motion carries. <clears throat> um, thank you, uh, Alderman Cookson, for coming this evening, and uh, I think this is going to be great legislation. Wonderful. Thank you. I, you know, it's a, we've got a lot of support for it. We've got 10 members of the committee, uh, 10 members of the full board that are already supporting this, so I'm happy to get this um, back out of committee and back up to the full board and, and hope that we can do this for our senior or for our um, vets. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, is there any general discussion this evening? Seeing none, I don't see any members of the public for public comment. Uh, remarks by Alderman, Alderman Lopez. Um, so tomorrow we have our budget hearing. Um, and then Wednesday we have um, the Taste of Downtown, I believe. I thought we had finance. <laughs> I know. Some of us have finance. That's what I uh, have. And then on Thursday, if anybody's watching the gratitude mural unfold over by PRG, um, there's going to be an opening ceremony of that at 6 o'clock. Great. Thank you. Anything further? Uh, there's no non-public this evening. Do I have a motion? Alderman McCarran. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Motion is to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we are adjourned at 7.45. Ben, which one's this?